Yo! It is another edition of the iOS podcast. Almost weird, Jack Fritz, to just do a normal yo. You know, no offense to Taiwan Walker. I'm excited. Matt Strom, excited. We're going to talk about it all. Carlos Rodon just got paid, what, like 20 minutes ago? That dream officially over. We'll get into all of it. But, you know, just to. A ho hum, we're back. It's 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 it. we're going about our business, yo. What up, buddy? How you doing? We're taking this day by day, James. I guess uh, I guess that's that kind of yo that you were given there. Is like, listen, this is a, a business uh, like uh, attitude that we take to this yes, uh, take to this correct. podcast. Correct. We take it. We take it one podcast at a time. We don't get too far ahead of ourselves. You know, we just now these are the the dog days of the off season. I guess. <laughs> I mean. The worst right, thing. So we're that- talking lineup for the next, like, we got, we got tonight. We could talk about some signings and then it's like lineup for the next, you know, six weeks or so. I mean, whoever said that, that everything needs to get done at the winter meetings. I mean, what <laughs> that's a- the first time ever. It's like, it's like NBA free agency or NFL free agency. It's like, it's awful. Everybody saw. I know. I know. Honestly, it's, we all complained about it forever too. And we're like, yeah. Oh, it'd be so good for baseball. Oh, Wah. why can't it be like the other sports? And then we get it. And we're like, wait, hold up. Oh, it's done. <laughs> it's like, that there's like, it's, we're good. <laughs> well, and uh, and just like we always said, buddy, uh, baseball always gets it right. You oh, know, yeah. they they always, oh yeah, they always have the the pulse of of what sports fans are thinking. So there's you know, no sport that is on people's minds twenty four hours a day, three hundred sixty five days a year, twenty four seven days a week, three hundred sixty five days a year. Like it, it's just constantly not just on people's minds. In the dialogue, in the national dialogue on a daily basis. So, oh, dude, skip, a, skip a chant at debate it every yes. day. You know, <laughs> like, uh, ah, Carlos Rodon, too much money for a left-handed starter? What do you think, Skip? Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, boring. Again, like, there's, <laughs> there's nothing better. You know, now that we look back fondly on our younger years, James, um, there is nothing better than, like, reading into the Heyman tweets or mm-hmm. reading it, like, getting excited about a, about a possible signing. Like the thing that was so crazy about the uh, Turner and then into, into Taiwan Walker and, and uh, Strom was just like, Hey, the Phillies signed these guys. Like there's no like hearing the Phillies are close on this. Yeah, or... you're right. You're right. There was not a single no. tweet about any. I mean, the Turner, stuff, sitting there on a, on a Turner freaking... stuff was yeah. a little bit before because it was like, oh, where's Trey Turner go? Because he was like the biggest guy in the market or one of the you know three or four biggest guys in the market. But you're right. Like other than that, it was just like like Tywin Walker came out of nowhere. Like obviously we knew it was possible he's a free agent, but at no point before the Taiwan Walker to the Phillies tweet, ironically, John Heyman. Uh, like at no point before that did we hear one word about Taiwan Walker meeting with the Phillies or anything. Like that. They weren't even linked to him. Like they weren't I even know, they should have weren't even linked to him. Um, you know, it's it, it kind of seems like looking back, um, whoever would have signed of, of Tyone or or Walker probably would have been their guy. Like it seems like it seems like they're pretty fairly um, you know, on the same level. It's almost I guess, the exact right? same thing. Yeah, Walker got like four for seventy two and, and Tyone four for sixty eight. So <laughs> Who says first? Who says yes yeah, first? We'll, exactly. uh, we'll sign you. Um, but yeah, it's just been weird. And like, I mean, who's the biggest free agent left? Like all these relievers well, that I now bet after. That... I mean, Swanson, right? Dan oh, yeah. I'd be counts, I guess. I guess. But I mean, that's pretty sad that he's like the big dog on the market now. Well, yeah, it, it's not great. Um, and at the same time, like if the Braves don't resign him, what's the uh what's the plan down there, in Atlanta? Uh oh, trouble in paradise. Are they gonna start Grissom and then Can Sean have... Murphy play shortstop? I don't think so, dude. I know, I know. We'll get into time on Walker and uh, and Matt Strom, but let me just make an official statement here. Yeah. Uh, Sean Murphy stinks, man. Yeah, like, that I didn't get. Like honestly, I know he's a much better defensive player, but like I kind of like William Contreras better. <laughs> Oh, right, 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 100%. That's what I'm saying. Dude rakes, man. Like, 100%. Like, dude, dude, just keep Travis Darno. Like, Travis yeah, Darno. I'm with you. It was a really what weird thing. We Everyone's like, oh, rich get richer. I was like, really? Dude, I mean, uh, am I? Okay, I mean, maybe, he's like, it, maybe it's 20 homers and plays good defense. Like, cool. Also, just, I mean, I guess they, they need to get Olsen, but he could have just kept Shea Langoliers and whatever. It's just like, um, I don't know. Like, he's fine. It, it's just... 
I don't think yeah, he's, he's some... a good player. Look, yeah, he's, he's like fine. a 250, 20 homer, great defense catcher. Like, that is a valuable player, yeah. especially in today's game with the way catchers hit. But they were acting like they trade for Romuto or something like that. It's like, relax, dude. No, they relax. act like they trade for, like, a difference maker. I mean, he's, a, he's an important piece, I guess. But like Sean Murphy is like I'm supposed to be shaking in my shorts because you yeah you, you signed Sean Murphy I don't know it's just a bit of a weird Braves uh, do it again oh best front office in the history of baseball um so yeah it's like Dansby is the biggest one next and you know I mean some teams probably gonna have to overpay because he's the last like pretty good free agent uh, guy on the market but then after that it's like all those relievers like the script like the the Kimbrels the Chapmans the um, you know, those guys are all, are all kind of the next guys to go. Like we're starting to, I mean, there's, there's just no real intrigue left before Christmas. It, it's crazy. so weird. Now it's, it's, it's so smart, weird. you know, get the holiday shopping out of the way. You could, well, as Turner we said, jerseys. Hey, Hey, it's great. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, we're, 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 we're like, you know, two months away from pitchers and catchers and it's almost all done. So I guess this is the new norm. I look, I I actually think this could be fun if people expected it. Yes. You know, like like NFL and NBA where it becomes a thing and it's like, okay, it's you know, middle of December. Get ready, baby. Like, let's go nuts. Like refresh Twitter all day, every day. It's coming. Then it can be fun. Like it could be a, a thing that they can capitalize on but i'm with you this year just felt like because we weren't expecting it was like oh it, it, ah what it just it was anticlimactic in a way which is crazy um specifically to the turner contract they will say you know and i, I know this is not a uh is a pretty common refrain right now but you know great job by the phillies logging that up quick because the way the market has played out i mean i would much much rather have turner at 11 for three than Bogarts at 11 for 280 is crazy. I don't know what Swanson's going to go for, but I can tell you, I'd much rather have Turner in his contract. And I'd much rather have Turner than Cray, but I liked him better. The Cray one I get, but still like, you know, big time freaking money. Um, your thoughts on how the market shaked out with these like big men. And, and look, Rodon just signed for, for six for 160. Um, you know, pretty big, pretty strong amount of money there. Um, your thoughts on kind of how the market shook out with these guys? Well, the interesting part um, about the Correa thing is that it came out, what, I think like a day or two later that, you know, it was pretty much Turner was obviously their main target. Um, but Which Correa is wild. Was, it means the Giants, Padres, and Phillies were all like all in on, on Turner and we won. Per usual. That's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do, man. Destination like, it, it, city. It's just what we do. And again, doesn't happen without Citizens Bank Park being the coolest place in sports yeah, for a month. It's true. Um, it's true. Um, but it came out that, you know, the Phillies' second choice was 100% Correa. Yeah, so, like, as it should have been. Because I guess they woke up, um, I guess they woke up that Monday morning and they were like, it was kind of like Harper, where they were like, I don't think we're going to get Turner. Like, we might want to start, you know, coming up with another plan here. And then obviously things changed. I'm sure Bryce got in his ear and it was like, mm, you sure you want to be a San Diego <laughs> Padre? Um, but I just wonder, like, I mean, we were very close to probably having to sign Correa for like 13, 350. Like we could, yeah. we could be sitting here with another huge contract like that. Now the yeah, AAB, Turner's a, and Turner is a huge contract too. Don't get me wrong. hundred yeah. um, percent. But just the sticker shock of another contract that's bigger than Bryce's like on, yeah. you know, whole dot like 350 is well especially for the fan especially for the fan base where right or wrong and obviously time will will bear it out but the fan base clearly preferred turner so i think if they end up signing correa for that contract everyone's like why didn't you just sign turner what the bleep you know and they lose it yeah um and then us voice of reason they came in and said because he's a good player. He's great. He's and, awesome. and and do you really want to sign Xander Bogarts for eleven through eighty? Like is that really the well, other that's thing? that's the crazy one. Oh, I mean, that's just gosh. like the Padres just panicked after Turner didn't take their deal. I mean, <laughs> wild. I mean it, like I'm speechless when Wait, I think what of was that the, contract. What was the thing that came out? They they offered like a billion dollars to th like three different players and none of them and none of them took it until Bogarts. Yeah, unbelievable, man. I mean, it really is good. It is what well, now I will say it is slightly disappointing that, like, you know, other than the Yankees, maybe, you know, an American League team could decide to spend some freaking money. Like, other than what the a, Rangers, irrelevant. Like, you know, I don't know. 
could, could not all these guys not go to the National League? What the hell's the deal with that? Why are all these National League teams signing all these big guys? Like, we know the Mets are going to do it. Like, really, does the NL West have to beef up to really, Jack? Really? Well, so here's my thing. It's like, I definitely, I definitely hear you. But man, is it going to be a lot of fun next year? Like, yeah. it's going to be... It's going to be awesome. Um, the one thing that actually has bummed me out a little bit, James, is that, you know, for the first time in my life, mostly, I would say. <laughs> well, I keep forgetting I'm almost like 30, so I'm cooked. Um, yeah, it's good. It's great, dear. Um, but for the first time, like the, like, the Braves, Mets, and us all realistically have – a chance to go to the World Series. Oh yeah, and it just kind of sucks. I mean, that you could argue they're three of the the I don't know six best teams in baseball going into the it, season. Barossa it just kind of it, it sucks that um, this is the year they're changing the schedule around to where you're not playing the NLC. I know. Match. Well, I mean, you know, it is it is good. I mean, from a I get it, and I love your the the, the heart of competition that beats inside of you. Winner. Um, this is amazing, and I'm ecstatic that it's a the the balance schedule and that oh, we will not stop. have. Why? It's great because we get to face all these other teams instead of facing the Mets and Braves a million times. Why do you want to face the Mets and Braves a million times? Because they're good, and we can start hating things again. Oh, buddy, I, I want to hate you. Know, you know when we can, you know when we can can play good teams in the playoffs. Let's worry about that. Let's freaking get there. All right, I don't need to beat up on each other. 19 games a season. Give me the Pirates more. Give me the reds more give me the freaking diamondbacks and the rockies and all these trash teams give me these all these america league teams that everyone gets to face like just tee off on the freaking royals and rangers and the a's now i mean geez louise like give me all these teams love it love the unbound or the balance schedule give it to me i get it i get your point and as a sportsman i appreciate it but I want to win, Jack. We almost won the World Series. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I just want the ring. I want the trophy. Nothing else matters to me. Like, I don't care how we get there. You know, it's like the whole, like, oh, I don't want guys to get hurt. No, I mean, not our players. Like, if guys get, like, oh, you're facing the, the Padres. Oh, Juan Soto got hurt. And it's like, oh, I wanted to beat them at their best. Not me. Don't care. I'll face a minor league squad as far as I'm concerned. That's my mentality right now. I want to win the World Series at all costs. Well, uh, 215-592-9494, if you want to get in and, and join the phones here. James Seltzer, known loser, uh, wants to see more of Royals, Reds, uh, the, the bad teams in the NL and, and AL. Me, I'm on the side. I'm on the side of give me more National League competition. Because, James, here's the one thing that you're not I want to win in. games. Win games, Jack. Here's the one Sorry thing that I want to win more than you. I guess I'm just, a, a, in reality, the, the bigger competitor. That's the truth. Here's the thing. And, again, 215-592-9494. We'll get to your calls in one minute. But this. but this team, how are they going to be battle-tested heading into the playoffs oh, this if they is aren't great. playing against top-level competition? They're still going to play them. They just don't need to play them as much. But They're still going to play all these You get, you get more battle-tested the more that you go along. Yeah, I need so that battle-tested that you win 85 games and miss the playoffs. That sounds awesome. Let's do that. They were so battle-tested that they only re – they, Pretty much the only reason they made the playoffs last year is because they beat the Nationals. <laughs> like, no, they, like, exactly, 17 out of 19 Yeah, times. the Nationals is the only part of it that's uh, a bit depressing that we lose all those games. But I'll take it for more Royals and Rangers games, let me oh, tell you. So, well, I mean, it, to be fair, seeing Bobby Witt Jr. would be a lot of fun for sure. Oh, especially he's on my fantasy team, keeper team. Uh, all right, uh, 14 minutes. Really good job by us. Taiwan Walker, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was good. It was good. I expected to go like a few minutes without talking about the signing. Didn't expect to get almost a quarter of an hour well, into the pod with that, without even just you know really talking about it at all. You know, my thing is James, is that I really like doing this podcast, <laughs> and I just like you know we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to well, it. We'll get there. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean whatever. I just sometimes I just want to. I want to have fun talking about sports every once in a while. You know I, I, mean? I I get it. I totally I mean, get it. God, me. this Eagles thing's been boring. Am I right? Uh, I mean, it's it's tough watching an all-time great team. I'm right there with you. Just watching them dominate people. It's just like, oh, God. Jack I will sends, say. 
Jack sends me a this is boring text every Sunday. Like, no, that's okay. Elliot. That's Elliot. Yeah. Oh, you're right. It is Elliot. But then yes. you'll be like, yeah, it is. And I'll be like, you guys are the worst. Well, no, what I usually do is that when the Eagles like go down their first drive, I'm like, sweet, a blowout. This is easy. <laughs> the team always comes back. Always. Um, I will say this. I will say this. An official update on my uh, on my Eagles uh, fandom. Um, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. This is the appropriate. I feel like we need uh, like a, a drum nah, roll or a breaking nah, I'm news. Just, or something. I'm just saying uh, my official update is that I'm back. You know, oh. it, it took me. It took me a good. Like I thought I was gonna get over the World Series and the high and that like a lot faster than I than I really did. Like it in reality, too the, long. the first time I felt anything about the Eagles was uh, when they beat the Titans. Me too. And I had the exact same thing. It was the Titan. They just whooped them. And I was like, okay. I was like, this is fun. I was like, yeah, this they, get them they, back. Well, and then and then in classic like uh, Phillies fashion, they they destroy the Titans. I'm like, oh, they're, they're back, like locked to go to the Super Bowl. And then like 20 minutes later, they signed Trey Turner. I'm like, you dogs, man, <laughs> you can't you can't let me get too far away, can you? They're like, just when they thought I was, uh, you know, maybe gonna start tweeting about the Eagles again. Bang! Oh. There's Trey Turner. I wonder if it's a coincidence. Probably not. Yeah, they probably heard me on the radio. I mean, saying, I mean like, they probably heard you. Oh, birds. Yeah. Oh, and you're tweeting, no. by the way. By the way, actually, you know, we'll get to that one more later. Speaking of tweets, yeah, since thank you. you brought it up. Maybe in the history of Jack Fritz, the, the most Jack Fritz tweet of all time hmm. is you is your top five things that you're most <laughs> looking forward to or that matter the most to me yes. for next year. Like, it Keyword. is. It is art, this tweet. This is Jack Fritz art, all the way down to adding a sixth and a separate tweet. Like, it is just Honorable perfect. Mention. But, but, but obviously, you know, everything else is good. You know, it's all solid. But, but you going with, with win the World Series at two, eclipsed by Trey Turner in eight for the cycle, is Dude. like, is like, it's almost like the bit becoming self-aware. It's almost too much. It's almost hard to to. I don't know, what am I supposed to say here? What do you want? Do you, what am I supposed to say, Jack? Would you rather see the cycle streak end? Than the world do? That's that's the question I have to ask here. Like for everybody, I have to ask you, if you could just have one of these things on the list happen next year. Would you really take? the cycle over the world series. Cause I fear, I fear the answer is yes. So if you gave me the option, <laughs> oh, man, this is already, already wrong. This is already the wrong answer. Whatever's you gave, gonna happen next, it's already wrong. If you gave me the option of hundred percent lock, like Trey Turner hits the cycle and the Phillies just, <laughs> just make the world series. They don't necessarily win the world series. I'll take the Trey Turner cycle. Like, oh I'm just, my god! Oh, just, my god. oh my god! Just think, like I, I, I want you to imagine. I just want. Can we just? Oh. Can we just hit? A, can I take a timeout? Timeout on the podcast. <laughs> timeout. Timeout. Okay, um, good. But I'm just saying. <laughs> is this like out. when I curse? Is this the same no, thing? This is, no, this is this is no, this is okay. staying in. But I want oh, you to. Okay. Talk, I want you to calm down. So don't just put a huge bleep over this whole. No, time. no, this is okay. this is timeout. This is timeout. But like, keep listening because not we're not really going anywhere. <laughs> I just like I want you to just envision for me like okay, awesome. Sir Anthony closes out the World Series. That's very exciting, and and the the rally towels are going. It's awesome. But imagine when Trey Turner starts making the turn for third base and just the reaction of that fan base when they know that the David Bell era has officially come to a close <laughs> and we no longer have to be haunted with the with the uh, replay every year to talk about David Bell's the last Philly to hit for the cycle. Like, it's going to be great. And the other thing, James, I was thinking about this and I wanted to know um, – if I could run this by you slash uh, slash start a new movement. Oh, good. I love when you do this. this Thank is you. Great. Yeah. So I don't know if you've seen the tape of the David Bell uh, cycle, but I'm pretty sure that in his last at bat or one of his last at bats where he hit the triple. I'm pretty sure that's a home run. And oh, would, you want a petition? I would just like to go back. I think it's a good and, idea right here. I like and, this. This is this is this is strong. This is really good work. What 
this whole thing is good. I'm, I just want to. I want to. I want to change the ruling, and if we can just change <laughs> it to a home run, get the replay on it, get the A Rod second camera, uh-huh. get the Zapruder film out. Like we got more important things than JFK. We need to figure out. <laughs> if, we got to figure I'm out. You knew what the honestly I'm impressed you knew what the Zapruder film was. That's good work by you. I'm shocked. I mean, no big deal to me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, let, let's not get carried away. I mean, I'm impressed that you knew it, not that any human knew it. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Yeah. If I wasn't doing this, I was going to school to be a history teacher. What? Yeah. Whoa! Bombshell on the pod. So if you were not, you like the baseball holding, by the way? Oh, it's good work. I've been, been holding baseballs all the time lately around the house. You nice. know what it's really good at? It's really good for keeping you away from your phone when you're watching stuff. I mean, we all know, like you go to grab your phone, you you want it like, oh, I missed that. I should have paid tag. I have to rewind it or I don't or I miss whatever. Like holding a baseball is a really good met, like like life hack or whatever that crap is. Like it really is. It's really good at like keeping you away from your phone because you're just playing with baseball. Let me see a grip. Let me me see a grip. You get a four seamer off for me or what? What I see is four seamers like that. Like one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, do, it doesn't look great. <laughs> it's, it's so like spread the, apart. I mean, yeah. knuckler, Jack. Yeah. No, nah, nah. <laughs> what are you holding a four seamer with? Like, I mean, because I'm it. throwing from the catcher position or third base. I'm not a pitcher. You're not Jack, getting right? any zip on I'm that. Not ripping. I'm. I'm just holding a baseball because it's fun to hold. Anyway, back to the point I was making. Um, which honestly, I I think I've completely lost in the moment here. Um. I was going to be a history teacher. Yes, thank you. What? <laughs> what? So explain. No. Explain. Okay. As someone who's like often kind of like shirked history, or uh, I mean, you're not bad. You're not bad, but you definitely have done the whole, you know, hating on the old people and you know things along those lines. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have taken you for someone who respects history, Jack. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely gotten way worse. It's honestly, it was the only, only subject in like high school that I was pretty good at. <laughs> and that's so only because like, like, I'll just teach it. It's because I'm like going to remember a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. Um, so no, I, just, I vividly remember after getting a one seven GPA my freshman year. Wow. Uh, Wow. I, was a fi- I was a finance major while playing baseball, and I'm oh, horrible one, in that. S- one Dude, seven. Dude, it was so bad. It was so bad. I remember I vividly, I left wow. my... Wow, uh... you almost have to like try to be that bad. <laughs> Dude, it was so bad. It was so bad. I mean, I'm sure that I'm just, I'm I'm shattering so many, uh, you know, people are like, had this image of me as a scholar, you oh, know? Yeah, I think that's yeah. what people thought. Yeah, yeah they're like, wow, this guy, every time I listen to him, it's just like, he's a super genius. Um, well, now to be fair, like I, 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 so I was sitting, anyway, I'll, I'll get to my future GPA because that's the one that really matters um your your future gpa in what the world in no, life no no like G- in the rest of, of college oh, okay yeah good um, good good i appreciate so it was my freshman year i'm coming off a hot one seven or whatever mm-hmm. i think it was and maybe the two two i don't know um it was one seven don't try and clean this up probably yeah. but but no, i was like sitting on a on a bench and i was like what do i want to do like you know i was like on one hand it'd probably be it, i would like to be a history teacher you know like you know, get to coach high school baseball, and, and that was really thing. the key of it. Right? Yes, it's like, how? What kind of teacher could I be where I could coach high school baseball? <laughs> That's the history. <laughs> history is the one. Sure. <laughs> um, but then, but then, on the other hand, I was like, well, what do I really want to do? And and uh, what I really wanted to do was give opinions on stuff. So look at you, buddy. Here so we are. To- Switched to mass communications, and I had a three three GPA in my major. Want that to uh, want that to let the record show. Three three. <laughs> no, doing, was that, doing like three and a three. Was that? What? I had a three eight in grad school. Yeah, well, it's because you're a nerd. So, so that's the story of me almost becoming a history teacher. Although I probably would have hated it, and uh, I'm way glad that I chose this. So here we are. Here we are, buddy. That was really. That was something. I did not see that coming. After that, though, plowed ahead, and and here you are. It's a story of perseverance, dedication, mm-hmm. and you and know, now Taiwan Walker is a Philly, and you know, stardom. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> sure.
Sure. All right. What do you think? Tywin Walker, 25 <laughs> minutes. Is that an appropriate amount of time to talk about the signing that is going to probably be some form of the title of the podcast or is at least the title of the broadcast that we're doing right now live? Well, I think um, it's like, we should just by like the way, talk. by the way, for people who don't know, if you just listen to the pod, we're doing them live now. Check us out. Check out the Twitter and stuff. We'll do it on the WIP YouTube page. So uh, if you ever want to watch, see the baseball I'm holding, make fun of how dumb we look cd miller lights that we drink during the podcast shout out to miller light um check out the video all right jack taiwan. um so i guess my official position is that taiwan walker is fine he's but good. there's a there's a part of me he's better than fine he's good he's good he's good he's a I, for me he's a low end three high end four i think it's a perfect way to put it I think um, it's a perfect way to put it but my he's better pro- than zach Eflin. my problem is is I, I just I kind of think they missed an opportunity. Like I just I I, the I feel that thing. way. Well, not even Rodon. Like I, I still think there could have been a trade out there for a for a better starter, whether it's sure. Bieber, whatnot. Like it's that's the weird part about this free agency. No trades. There hasn't been any big like trades. a zero, not a single big trade. And maybe they're um, I don't know. Would this even matter? But maybe they're waiting till after the holidays so people don't have to move during Christmas. Does that matter at all? It seems like something a team that would be like a really next level <laughs> thoughtful. I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I doubt it. Um, but uh, you know, I, I just, I so I think that you're heading into next year, and it's it's still Wheeler Nola, um, who are great. But I, I just, I have this fear in the back of my head. Like he's got Nola pitched two hundred and thirty some innings. Wheeler pitched a ton, and, and then you know had to. He had like a dip in the playoffs where like they couldn't pitch him on like less than six days rest. Um, Ranger was great, but like, you know, I love Ranger and I think he's really good, but it seems like every year it's like really good for like three weeks and then three weeks it's down and everyone's like, oh, get him back in the bullpen, you know, every year. I mean, it's going to happen this year. Yeah. Um where it's like he's he's obviously a number two starter, and then he goes back to like not being great, and then hopefully he gets on a run in the second half of the year, and it's good. But I think we're just we're putting Ranger into a category that I'm not sure that he's ready for yet. Like I like I had a vision of heading into this year with Ranger as like my souped up superstar four. You know what I mean? Um, so like I just think they like they're still heading into a postseason. Um, you know, a, a series where, you know, they got their one, two Ranger, I hope is good. And then it's like time Walker should be good, but is he, is he a difference maker? And I think he's more of a guy that gets you to the playoffs rather than through the playoffs. Yeah, I agree with that. I do think though, Ranger has the upside to be a guy who gets you through the playoffs as we've mm-hmm. seen just because of his demeanor and the way he goes about his business. And look, I don't think there's necessarily the year but there is depending on how they manage him you know andrew painter is the kind of guy who theoretically could be a difference maker now he's yes. young and and i think as you've talked about i think it's unfair to ask him to be that right now but i do think that 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 potential is there and that's you know what you're hoping for but I, i'm right there with you man like especially and it's not just high and it's the depth of the rotation too i mean you look at you know what the mets have done and you know annoying as it is and we talked about look i think steve cohen is is great for baseball it sucks he's made middleton better like we've talked about and you know you see these owners the freaking john fisher i mean talk about the sean murphy trade the embarrassing part of that is just another guy the a's just are going to trade away and not pay like like they never pay anybody like um so but you look what the mets are doing i mean they they are literally like eight guys deep in that rotation and there are rumors they might trade carrasco away or, or whatever they have some maneuverability but like they got a bunch of guys and yeah, they got some old guys, potential injury risk, this and that. But you look at it in terms of getting through the season from a starting pitcher perspective, you know, they just got dudes that they can just kind of keep cycling in. That's something the Braves have been really good at the last few years with having guys in the high minors that they can kind of move up and move out the, you know, bad example of this, but like even Sean Newcomb had a year where he was good. Like those type of guys where, you know, you know what I mean? It's just the first name that popped in my mind of guys. You can move up and down. I'm not talking about the guys who stay in the rotation. Like I'm just saying like dudes, you know, and the Phillies, you have not had that. So I like, it's not just the high end part, which does worry me. I agree with you. Um, But because I do think, look, the, the five, if it's ultimately painter, and I do think they're going to have to add someone else. You know, I do think there's going to have to be a little more depth, here well i guess it comes down to what do you feel about falter 
you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Falter is the depth. And look, I the point I was going to make is, like, it is still a good rotation. You know, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. When you look at the rest of rotations in baseball, like, it's up there. It probably goes into the season as a top 10 type of rotation. Like, it's good. It's just to Jack's point. I mean, we just saw them lose the World Series because they went against, you know, a dude who no hit him. And then, you know, Framber Valdez being freaking nasty twice. And, like, they just ran into it. And you saw what, and then the best bullpen maybe we've ever seen, you know, you see what that can do and how that can win you a world series. And, and as excited as I am at the ovens and I am, I'm through, Mm -hmm. through the, you know, over the moon. Like I do still, I I think they still have to fill this out more like right now, because right now I don't think they have the depth. Uh, you know, and again, look, they they came two games away from the World Series. So, like, I'm not saying they can't win the World Series. But we but can't in terms of you know where they should be going in the season. They're they're a little light still. My thing is like, uh, I can't use that. I can't use that World Series as like a reference point for how right. it's, it usually works. Right. You know, we talked a lot about this with the Eagles winning in 17. It's like that's not a blueprint. Like they brought in a bunch of one year guys, and Nick Foles won the Super Bowl and got insanely hot. Like that's not something you can replicate. And they had like a magical chemistry culture thing that you know is once which in this a generation. team had. Which which yeah, this, this, which which is part had. of what the, I think that's part of what it was. And like, and you said that at, right after the season, you're like, it's hard to replicate that. It is. Um, it, it is a hard thing to replicate. So you know, I can't. I can't just use the whole and I can't I can't just keep saying, well, they got the game six of the World Series, so like everything's fine. You know, like they're like they they had things that went their way as well. So I just I'm trying to plan against having to go on a, a streak of our lives again to to get to the World Series. Like things are gonna be different, you know, going forward. Those magical runs just don't happen. Um and my thing is, like, I think Andrew Painter is gonna be insane. And like I've already got it, I've got his Hall of Fame plaque already up in <laughs> so, like no pressure. I can't, I can't wait to see what he does. But I think that peak Andrew Painter is still two years away. Oh, like, minimum. I think the, minimum. The, like, like, starting to really turn into like a, a star is still two or three yeah. years away. Um, like, he's going to come up, he's going to flash, but there's going to be some growing pains with him. Like, I mean, he's 20. Is he even like, 20? I think he just turned 20, maybe. He's like, I, think, I think he just, I think he's 19. He might be 19 <laughs> still. Sure. That's the way he's like super duper young, man. And, um, you know, like Jose Fernandez came up and was unbelievable, like, and just didn't stop being unbelievable, um, you know, until obviously, unfortunately, like passed away. But like, I, I'm just trying to think of guys who like, came up Bum- that young as pitchers who were that and good. were just good. Like Bumgarner came up and was really good. Um, you know, there aren't like, many. I mean, you see it with hitters sometimes, like the Bryce's of the world and stuff, but. That are just um, like Tatis was unbelievable from day one. Yeah, I mean was Trout was one. young when he came. I mean, there are guys who are just you know super. I'm just saying, like right. usually, usually pitchers come up and like they flash and then Wander they is another bit. super young kid who came up and, and flashed and has been good. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah, it's really rare. I'm trying to think. I'm racking. I, there are definitely examples, and I'm sure there are people listening to this right now. Are like, how could you not think of this person or that? Like Dwight Gooden was pretty young when he came up. I don't even know if he was that young now. Um, I mean, it's really rare. Like, like I, I, uh, Walker Bueller's always been pretty good. Yeah, he's been great, but he wasn't even ni- like nineteen twenty. Was, a... was like, see that young? Because nineteen twenty is no, really well, he young. Was a draft pick. He was drafted out of Vanderbilt. So yeah, uh, like it's nineteen twenty to come up and and have success right away as a pitcher is like uber rare. It is, and 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 hey, I, if Andrew Painter's the exception, like can't wait. We'll take it. Yeah, like yeah, I, I, I'll take it. Um, it's just a big ask. And the last time that Dombrowski did this was Bonderman, and Bonderman wasn't anything that was great. No, he um, wasn't. So, um, again, it's just it's just a big ask and falter. You know, I like some of the things we saw from him last year. I think people are overreacting a little bit too much to, to one his, playoff start. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Especially a game that he hadn't pitched in what, like 15 days or whatever yeah. it was. And it's like, also, hey, kid, go out in the playoffs and do it. And then he got shelled to get through an inning. It's like, he's the worst pitcher I've ever seen. Get him off the team. Especially, I do think, I don't think the Phillies, and I don't blame them, but I think the Phillies immediately taking him off the World Series or not putting him on the World Series roster didn't help people's perception of him. Like the whole thing was just like a disaster. He was, we trusted him more than guys. We were like, oh, I trust him more than Nola at one point. Well, they don't make the, like, Straight up, they don't make the playoffs if Falter doesn't do what he did in the middle I of the season. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. he was the stopper at one point, Bailey Falter. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does. You know, this year, like, he's fine. Um. Again, like, I just think they missed an op- like the the window. We've talked about it's a lot, but like the window is now, and and it's kind of you push all your chips in, and if that costs you a Mick Abel, 
and it costs you to make able. Like you, I, I have trusted the pitching development staff enough to where they can go out and they can keep finding, finding guys. So, um, so, but Tyler Walker on the surface, like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I, I've liked him a lot. You know, I, I, I drafted him in 2013. In the oh, draft, buddy, so. I've owned him many a times in his Diamondback days. All oh, of it. Seattle. Oh, you know, Seattle. The, the, yeah. the year of the Blue Jays, we're at a two something ERA. Yeah. Um, so, good, you know, though. he's and he throws hard, man. He, he well, brings it. Sort of. I mean, like, not, he's he like 93, 99. 95. Not anymore. He's not anymore. No, Didn't he's he like, last he's like, year. He's like 93 to 96 in most of the starts that I watched. Uh, and I have watched a couple starts since they signed. I could have sworn I saw him hit 99 last year at the Mets. Um, I would be. I. I don't think so. You're but much better at this speed than I am. So I. Try. Um, the thing that I'm really excited about, and 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 the and the thing is, is that um, if if you gave me a choice of Tyone or Taiwan Walker, I would have rather had Taiwan Walker. Like I just he he probably isn't as durable as as Tyone, which is weird to say. Um. But I just like the stuff more, you know. I like the stuff from from Tywin Walker more. Still has a, a good, you know, high spin four seamer that you know it, it's not as powerful as it used to be, but still does it. But I, I, I genuinely, I can't wait for the splitter, man. Like I, I'm a sucker for a good splitter, um, and Tywin Walker splitter is awesome. So um, I look forward to now Kyle Schwarber not having to hit home runs off of him. You know that should that should bring his ERA down by a little bit. I don't um, know. And uh, that is the big problem with the un- uh, the balance scheduling is Schwarber can't face the Mets as much. <laughs> I know, I know. At least June still exists. If they think out June, we might be in trouble, but I don't <laughs> think they're gonna do that. If they if get I, rid, if, if they get rid of June, we're screwed. Yeah. Um. So you know, I he's good. He's he, I think him as a four is a luxury. Um. The weird part about him, and, but something that I actually am turning into a positive, is that the last two years. First half has been unbelievable. You know, ERAs in the two, um, you know, a lot of buzz about Taiwan Walker. And then like his second half's kind of falling apart. But Wheeler esque back in the day. But he is now a full two off seasons removed from from Tommy John. You know, I, I kind of anticipate that the more and more he throws and the more and more his body continues to get adjusted to this, that like I think he's gonna be able to power his way through and, and get, you know head into the home stretch and, and in second halves pitching really well. So I actually think it's a, it's a bit of an upside play. You know, his, he hasn't pitched a ton like for, for a guy that's 30 and it's been around for so long. It's not like he's pitched a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think 2019 was like his first full year in the majors. Yeah. Well, it felt like I remember promoting him fantasy. It always felt like I owned him and he was injured not for the year. Yeah. I felt like that was like the Taiwan Walker story. So, I, I mean, maybe there's, there's more upside there. Um, but you know, overall, a really, really good number four, a low end three that is going to help them get to the playoffs again. Um, but again, what happens in the playoffs? Like having to start Thor in a World Series game, like is mm-hmm. is pretty much my nightmare. Um, so Thor just it, got one year, thirteen million too. I know, I know. Market's uh, wild. This dude, market is why wild. Did, why did Tyler Anderson sign so early? Like, I know. He, what a mistake. He blew it. What is it good for the angels did something good for the first time ever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's fine. And, uh, and, uh, I'm definitely excited for Taiwan Walker. It doesn't uh, seem old... like it. You're very, no, said, no. you probably said fine. Like 13 times about it. I like Taiwan Walker. I'm excited about Taiwan Walker. I just can't help but feel like they're, should have been a bigger i'm you know, with you look i'm the one who said go get rodone you know look the yankees signed judge and rodone can't be the yankees whatever no big deal um <laughs> what about straw i know you're really excited about straw oh come on man <laughs> come on. Come on. i'm gonna sign any left to reliever i feel like i'm getting that response from you no i mean you want to talk about you know wheelhouse if you want to talk about looking for 2016 fantasy guys yeah. uh 27 actually you know i feel like 2016 was like like closer in years than it really was like 2016 was like seven a while years ago. ago yeah it was a while ago anyway um yeah. maybe more like 2018 2019 uh fantasy hype matt strom yep. so uh Last year was his first year converting to a full-time reliever role. I know he had talked about that he wanted to start again. I, they didn't sign him to start, you know, and he was never a good starter. So he seems like a guy. Um, you want to know my comp for Matt Stramas? Sure. 
2016 Brad Hand. Where <laughs> how's that? How's that for a comp? Where not a good starter. It's a good has, pitcher. Has really, really good stuff and blossoms. Well, if he blossoms into what Brad Hand did in San Diego, like I mean, we're getting a, a yeah, steal. It's, it's, it's a, he'd be the a closer for the team, like shutting <laughs> so, games down. Uh, probably won't be that, but um, like the 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 f- there's legitimate upside here that we just haven't seen from the last couple of of free agent signings, uh, especially in the bullpen. Like there's legitimate upside that that has me excited. Like I think we could be looking back a year from now and be like seven and a half millions of steal. Um, well, especially so, with the way the other prices have been, you know, it's, it made it look even better. It's insane. Um, so just from the looks of it, fastball seems like it's hard to pick up. Um, it seems like. Like the overall scouting report in, you know, just in watching them is seems like stuff's really good, moves all over the place, um, tough to square up, but doesn't know where it's going all the time, which is classic. So he's going to definitely frustrate us at some points. But listen, man, if they could make Jose Alvarado yep. like, <laughs> like not be yep. a heart attack to watch, I'll take a shot on a lefty that has control issues, possibly figuring it out here. Um, so, yeah, Matt Strom, I'm really, really excited about. Something that I thought was fascinating that he did last year um, is, <laughs> so, generally speaking, for right-handed pitchers, they we're, we're always taught to, to stay on the right side of the mound because it creates the angle to where it looks like the ball is being released behind their head, um, and it's just, like, harder to pick up, supposedly. Sure. So... Um, like starting on the left side of the mound, it gives the right-handed batter more time to pick up pitcher throwing. So the 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 idea is starting on the right side of the rubber to be a, more deception. What Matt Strom did last year was against lefties, he went all the way to the left side of the mound, and against righties, he went all the way to the right side of the mound. So like I've never seen pitchers change sides. Move sides. That's really interesting though. I mean, why not? It's, it's a tiny advantage, you know. Just stay in one spot. Um, so that's, that's just something really, to look for. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah, it's fun. It, it's yeah. kind of fun. I, li- I uh, like that. I like that. I'm and, intrigued and, to watch it. And I think the thing that I like the most about Strauman and, and Taiwan Walker is that they continue to look for guys that just seem like great dudes. Like they keep like Schwarber, um, uh, like Strom, Taiwan Walker, culture, Brandon Marsh. culture matters, Jack. Great guys that everyone wants to be around. Hey, look, it um, mattered. We talked about it a zillion times how important we thought that was, you know? So um, I think there's going to be some c- control issues there, but uh, if they could fix Jose Alvarado's control issues, I, I'm pretty confident that a former starter that, you know, has some stuff can can figure it out. So I'm definitely excited about Matt Strom. My big thing now is, it's like, what's next? You yeah, know, well, like that was going to be my next question. Cause I'm right there with you on Strom. Everything you said, look, he's Brad Ham replacement. Like win. We're great. Uh, what's next. That was literally my next question. Here. But, it, uh, and at this point, uh, looking at the reliever market, you know, there's some like interesting little names, but you're kind of st- like, how, how confident are we supposed to be heading into next year with, and, and Sir Anthony and Alvarado are, are, are great. But but also like, to the point you made about Nolan Wheeler, Sir Anthony Alvarado asked to pitch into November, like coming back after a short off season, all that, like, you know, bullpen pitchers year to year. It's so fluctuating. You know, I, you know, I'm, I can't just say they're locks. I feel great about Sir Anthony, but like, I'm not, I'm not sure they're going to be as dominant as they were last season. I hope they were, but do you know what I mean? Like, well, dude, there is I mean, uncertainty there. I mean, Sir Anthony Especially for missed- Alvarado's had like, you know what? Like, three good months, right? I mean, three great months, but like prior, he got sent down in June or whatever it was. So, you know, like, no. you know, I, it's, it's, you're asking a lot if you're saying, all right, we got these two studs and we're set, like, you know. Well, and the other thing about Sir Anthony is, is that, dude, when he, when he got hurt for the month or whatever it was, the bullpen was a disaster. Like, it was a freaking mess. Yeah, it felt when, like when, they when, lost, like, the, the linchpin of the bullpen. Yes, and they were just, they yeah, lost yeah, everything. It was, it was yeah. awful. Um, And, like, I love Brogdon. I love Bilotti. But, like, you know, Brogdon was unpitchable at one point, and then he got hot, which is great. But we've seen every year, like, relievers get hot. I, I, I just think that, you know... And, and Sir Anthony, I mean, Sir Anthony and Alvarado, actually, I mean, by the end of the World Series, like they didn't have they didn't have their best stuff. Like they were yeah. they didn't look 
they didn't look how awesome they looked, you know, in the in the CS and the and the DS. Um, so that's a real big concern for me. And like they were linked to Seth Lugo today from from Heyman. It's like that's fine, sure. You know, Sethy spin rates. Um, Apparently, he wants to start those. What they're saying, cute, that, cute, yeah, Seth. That's the, that's the Phillies adorable. wanted him as a reliever, and uh, and so it's not likely to happen. So, you know, I think that, you know, there hasn't been many trades so far this offseason, but I mean, it seems like maybe Liam Hendricks is available, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to go lock down the back end mm-hmm. and let everyone else fall into a role. Um, you know, you could sign a bunch of these like semi cooked guys and like, like did last rope. year. Yeah. Like, oh, geez. Um, Dombo's like, guy. I, you know, this might come back to bite me. I actually wouldn't hate signing Zach Britton just to see if there's anything left. You know, you, I mean, I know they saw always, you are like the world's biggest Zach Britton sucker and always have it. He's a great pitcher, but like you, you are, you are the guy. Everyone has those guys that they're still in on like six years after they're out of the league. Zach Britton's your guy. Yeah. Me and Buck Showalter leaving him in the yeah, bullpen. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, right. you wouldn't have done that. You're no, kidding? I would have brought him in in the third. You kidding me? He's yeah, playing. exactly. Yeah. Um, Dude, I'm just saying that, like, what was it 2015 Zach Britton? Like, the, the best, oh. that's the, the best pitcher I've ever seen in my life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, besides, besides second half, uh, second half Arietta or whatever that, that three yeah, nights, that was a good I mean, one, too. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are right. I love, I've always, <laughs> I know, I know, I, mean, I know, trust me, I know I'm right. I didn't, I don't, I don't appreciate being called out and stuff like that <laughs> I know, at you all. Know. I know um, I, it completely <laughs> threw me off my rhythm. <laughs> But <laughs> well, because I started thinking about that sinker. Are you kidding me? I mean, that I, it's disgusting. Um, no, but yeah, I just don't know what the. I got. I, I think those guys are fine. You know, I think they're good. And I and I, you know, I I just think that there, there needs to be more bullpen moves. Is my overall take. Big like, time. Big time. Like they, whether it's signing one of these free agent guys, I would have signed Pierce Johnson. I was a little annoyed they didn't sign him. I know you're a big Pierce Johnson guy. Oh, big Pierce Johnson um, guy. Loved him. Um, but i just wait you know maybe there's a trade out there you know maybe after the maybe that's the next domino of um of this market is is these these free agent trades so or these um these reliever trades but i i it's one of those those things you look at and it's like man i it's just i can't i can't sit here and say everything's fine when i when i look at the bullpen when i'm thinking about one 162 again so you know um, which, which I think I don't think they are looking at and saying it's fine. I do think no. there are more moves to come. Yeah, whether it's trades or not. Look, we've heard so many, you know, Jason Stark and all these people being like they're going to go further. They're still spending all that stuff. So I believe there'll be more stuff that happens. But I'm with you. Like I, I hope it's not retread signings. Like I hope Ugh. Dave learned from the familiar signing last year. I mean, Seriously, we helped you know? him though. I mean, we we we, we did. But were that's like... that exact same signing. I mean, it's exactly like signing Craig Kimbrell would be the exact same thing as signing Familia last year. Like, it's the exact same idea, you know? The, I don't the want one that. guy, the one guy I am, I am talking myself into, um, that, that, you know, that's not Zach Britton, um, of the, uh, of the cooked, the cooked crew, yeah. um, is, is Trevor May, the one of the baby aces. Bring home, bring him home. So, so here's my, here's my reasoning. Uh, I know if you look at the, the overall ERA, you're like, Oh my God, what a, what a terrible idea. Um, apparently he was not tunneling his slider and his fastball Ooh, until late in the season. Concern. You got a tunnel final two months. ERA too busy around play, playing on Twitch or whatever it is. He does. Yeah. Uh, final two months in the ERA round two. So, um, I would, I would take like a Trevor look. May. I've always I would take Trevor a look May. at Trevor May. Yeah, um, like other than and he, that, and he actually is from here. Like, wasn't just a, like, a. I believe, right? Like he's actually a from here guy too. I could no, be he's a he's a uh, he's a baby A, so it's not like he's from here. I know he was, but I think he is also from here. Let's see. Yeah. No, he is from Washington State. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. The only on guys, the, the only guys I absolutely do not want to sign. Look, are... look it up myself. He is not from Washington State. He is from. He is from. Hold on. Not Washington. Washington, Washington yeah, State. From, no, he's from here. Look, yeah, he's from here. Yep. Turns out he's from here. I was right though. <laughs> Washington State. <laughs> Was- the, the 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 state of Washington. No, it's Washington, Philadelphia. It's yes. Yep. That's right. Yep. All right. The That's only enough. the only pitchers I don't want out of the bullpen uh is is Chapman, Kimbrell, Will Smith, 
Uh, I don't really want Knable again. Will Harris, uh, Brad Hand, Michael Givens, Michael Farmer, Ian Kennedy, Rosenthal, yeah, Adam Odovino. Oh, my God. If they sign Adam Odovino, I'd be so furious. And Archie Bradley. That's like of, of the there whole There was crew. one guy in there you said who I wouldn't have hated, and I'm, now I'm blanking on who it was. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Who was the Sorry. one? Who was two before Odovino? Uh, Michael Givens, Michael Fulmer. Michael Fulmer. I would sign Michael Fulmer. I'd be all right with that. <laughs> Man, we really are 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Fulmer. Michael He's Fulmer right. traded. Traded former, for who? Former Mets prospect. Yes. Top Mets prospect. Traded for who? Um, so he's traded to the Tigers. Uh, who is he traded for? Uh, tell me. Jonas Cespedes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The that, Cespedes that, trade. That jives. That jives. Um, all right. Um, what else? <laughs> I guess that's it. Take that. I feel like we're. 50 minutes in, I feel like we're firmly in take bag territory here. Um, first thing I take bag, I do, you know, we're just talking about relievers. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if Griff McGarry is gonna have a bigger role on this Ooh, team than you, you want to talk man. about it. You want to talk about a possible impact reliever? Yeah, I mean, no, it's a yeah. really interesting point. We've only talked about trades and signs of that, we've not thought at all about internal options, and you know. Griff's good. That could be Chris, cool. Griff, especially out of the bullpen. I mean, yeah, already... out of the bullpen, if he could just go max effort for oh an inning gosh. or two, like that's, you know. Honestly, yeah. screw it. I don't even need him to be a starter anymore. Give me, just make give him me... an elite reliever. Yeah, an elite reliever. if you could reliever. have an elite, re an elite reliever. Like if you had another Sir Anthony, essentially, for like, you know, six years of team control or whatever, like it's a freaking valuable piece, man. <laughs> it's a really valuable guy. So it's an interesting thought. Yeah, I just um, yeah, I, I I keep looking back and it's like, well, man, maybe maybe Griff's a, a big part of their plan. Um, so that that's a thought on that. Um, <laughs> this is gonna make you mad, but I need oh, to just gi give me just give me two minutes. Just give oh, me two. Gosh. Minutes, okay. All right. Yeah. Should I read my book or should I actually like pay attention? What should I do here? Well, the worst part about doing these on camera now is I can see your facial reactions and stuff. Um, <laughs> so, so you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. It's ready so, the Phillies, so the Phillies saw, uh, hired a new minor league hitting coordinator. Um, <laughs> this is fine. This is fine. This is what we do here. I'm okay with this. Go ahead. Uh, so, they, 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 so they hired Luke Merton, um, who was a cross checker for the Padres. Um, obviously work with Preston Mattingly and, and all that stuff. Um, so he's a former, uh, another Yankee guy. He was a Yankee farmhand, uh, actually owned his own hit, hitting advancement, uh, wow. company. He's owned it since 2009. So, uh, seems pretty well versed in, in hitting. Um, I'm not going to say like, I know a ton about him, obviously. Um, but it, you know, in, in a long article by, by Gelb today, just detailing the, the new philosophical changes for the, the, the Phillies hitting, you know, um, you know, uh, organizational structure or whatever. Um, I, I, I leave it feeling pretty happy. You know, basically what they tried to do is try to rec recreate what they did with Brian Kaplan um, and the pitching side. And the, the pitching side is just a freaking monster. Um, but you look what they did with, with uh, they brought in Brian Kaplan as like the major league pitching coordinator, but he also has a ton of influence over what they do in the minor leagues. So essentially what it seems like is that top down, they have guys in the major leagues and, uh, you know, the whole from there to Lehigh to Redding to, to Jersey Shore to Clearwater, like they're all on the same page. All on the pitching side, but the hitting side, they were all over the place. So, like now with Kevin Long and Luke Merton, you know, at the top, they are they are instituting a top down approach on the same thing. They're going to bring in, I think, more hitting guys on that side. Um, so they're trying something to get the the hitting figured out because the pitching has been figured out. And I'm just saying. I, I like that they're going the Padres kind of way here. And what has me the most excited about it is that, you know, the Padres, while, while I think they have one homegrown player on the roster, if, I, if I'm looking at the, like they're all trades or, or free agent signings, 
you don't be able to make those trades unless without you all the prospects. Back. Yeah, no doubt. Correct. Correct. And they've I mean, had Trey Turner originally. Exactly. Back in the day. But yeah. even though that was like a, a know, different organ. No, I know. I'm just saying, like ago. pointing out the, the that those people can turn into great players. Right. But um they have hit on a lot of high school bats over the last couple of years. So they figure out high school pitching. I mean, Mick Abel, Andrew Painter, it's a pretty good start. Now, if you can figure out high school bats and get the upside of, out of those guys, like the Padres had Robert Hassel and James Wood and CJ Abrams. And like, they've had a lot of guys, you know, and I, I just, I, I have a vision, James, that they figure out the hitting side paired with the pitching side already unbelievable. And then you have the the foundation they already have in the major leagues with waves and waves of young talent that can possibly come up and be facilitated in trades and just make everything even better. Um, so my Look overall, yeah, like now I can see your face too and see you glowing right now. My, uh, I mean, I just, I'm just sitting here thinking about a world where our payroll is is still like in the two fifties. We got superstars in the roster, and they also have a dope minor league system. And I just, I just think that they are on the verge of being a freaking juggernaut, man. And I, you know, I think the Phillies and the Eagles are so far and away the best run teams in the city. Wow. And I just it's think a, that, not, not a bold statement right there, but, I'm but I think that they're, I think they're both like, I just think these next 10 years for both teams are going to be pretty, pretty insane. So, um, it was it, it was an interesting hire. I, I'm I'm interested to see how it goes from here, but I love the idea of just like everyone getting on the same page, bringing in smart hitting people. Um, this guy's going to help in the draft, and he's he was a cross checker for the Padres. And again, the Padres have been really good at drafting high school hitters. Um, so maybe he has the eye. You know, Barber's done a really good job on the pitching side. Hitting is leaving a little bit to be desired. So you get everyone going, you get everything on the same page. Man, it's like. I mean, how do you not get giddy about this? Stuff? Like, <laughs> well, I, just, I look, don't know how. It sounds like, you know, dare I say, the things smart baseball teams do. You know, yeah, it sounds it sounds smart. You know, what a thought. Begged for years for a smart baseball team, and we might have finally got it. But uh, that's all I got. Okay, that's all Good. I got. Good. Good. Bedtime for your boy. How about it? Um, right on time. Yeah, this is good. Honestly, this was really fun. I had a great time. I always do. I'm I pretty tired. I, I yawned like 15 times. I'm so tired. Oh, I, right tell. I had a I had a, a Zoe a Zoe Daddy night tonight. Emily was out with with friends having drinks, and let me tell you, lot to handle tonight, Jack. Get ready, pal. Get ready. Some of those nights. Yeah. Were, I was like, yeah. At the end of at the end of my rope or whatever the the phrase is. Yeah, yeah, I haven't. Um, I feel like I need to get more mentally prepared for it. Yeah, I, it I, takes I, it out of you sometimes, buddy. It well, really does. You know, I'm, I'm sitting next to my crib, which is interesting. Like, why are you such a jerk? Like that kind of feeling. Yeah, that's good. Sounds good. It sounds yeah. fun. Um, Be nice to me. I'm your father. I love you more than anything in the world. Like, could you? Could you please? Just that kind of. I'm just trying to channel where I was at earlier. Like an hour. And then he came into this podcast, and, and then I up. and then I brought it, and no one had any idea until I just told him. See, it's yep. called being a professional, Jack. Yep. Although I think I'm getting kicked out of my podcast studio because uh, this is going to be the nursery in like oh buddy. three months. So. Yeah, that's a change. You should it's talk right. to little baby boy Fritz and be like, "Yo, kid." Yeah. WTF, man? What, my what the, yeah. Get that, get the bleep out. All right. <laughs> Who do you Figure think it you out. are? Yeah. yeah, we got the fills, kiddo. What, 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 <laughs> what, what, do you even do you even know who Trey Turner is? Yeah, why aren't you throwing a baseball yet, kid? What the hell, yeah. yeah. I clocked yeah. you earlier, it was it was a half a mile per hour, it's unacceptable. Yeah, and then we'll mm. start working on reflexes. Oh, it's gonna be great. Oh, poor kid, it's poor kid. <laughs> I know. Um, right, yeah, of yeah, way too much, you might say. Yes, kid, just please, please be good at, at baseball. It just feels like it's this kid is so doomed if he can't throw a baseball. I just feel so bad for him. Uh, as the by the way, the freaking Niners defense playing for me in fantasy just almost had a touchdown. Guess what? They didn't get a touchdown, Jack. Did they pick it off? Uh, fumble recovery. 
I got Seahawks money line. So got down to the seven. Not looking at seven three, but the Niners are moving. All right, that's more awesome. than enough of that. That that was our football drop in the night. I I figure you're always allowed to make gambling comments. I can talk about my fancy team in the playoffs. All right. I never said anything about your fancy team. I know it was a comment. All right, I'm done. You got anything else? I could really use Tyler Lockett scoring a touchdown tonight. Okay, I'm gonna root for that for you, buddy, because I don't really Thank care you. otherwise. Other, well, I guess against the Niners defense, but whatever. Could we get a Niners defensive touchdown? That'd be cool for me. Um, honestly, I don't really care. This is this is you know who cares? It's fantasy. I really don't care. You know what I care no, about? Fantasy football. Care bad. about the Phillies? Make some moves so we could talk about it, and that'd be fun. Um, so I mean, right. next week, next week we'll get into a uh, 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 lineup talk. Oh yeah, get ready. <laughs> Next week, we're going to let him talk. The week after that, we will definitely not be doing a podcast. So that's the schedule because <laughs> I'm off that week. So, um, all right. Uh, this was really fun. I needed this right now. I'm going to go back and make sure that my daughter is not, you know, drove my wife crazy now because she just got home. So it should be good. Um, all right. Uh, we'll be back soon. He's for some seltzer.